Welcome back to another edition of The Breakdown, you guys. Today I'm going to kick off my uh, Alabama versus Clemson college football playoff semifinal matchup with the comparison and contrast of Jalen Hurts and Kelly Bryant. I already know the narrative is going to be uh, Kelly Bryant and the explosive Clemson offense and their passing game, and, and it's going to be contrasted to Jalen Hurts in their inept passing game and the uh, inability to hit the receivers down the field. I'm here to tell you that if they start doing that, that that's a lie. And I'm going to break it down and show you why using the numbers of Jalen Hurts and Kelly Bryant alone here. I'm going to go through my analysis of these numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain. Oh, I'm going to first tell you the numbers of Kelly Bryant and Jalen Hurts. And then I'm going to provide uh, some analysis of those numbers. And at the end of that, you will see that statistically, Jalen Hurts is actually a better quarterback than Kelly Bryant. And the more inexperienced passer is actually Kelly Bryant. So let's get into it. Now, Kelly Bryant, Clemson quarterback, if you don't know him, he also wears number two. He's a really good runner. Uh, actually, he's a better runner than uh, Deshaun Watson, rookie sensation of the Houston Texans before the knee injury. Sorry to hear that for you, and I really like that guy. But let's get into some of his numbers here, Kelly Bryant. For the year, he had 362 passing attempts, and he completed 244 of those. He was averaging about almost 11 yards per completion, I think somewhere like 10.9 and a few other numbers. And he had 2,678 yards. With a completion percentage of 67.4. Solid. Uh, the yards per average, though, were 7.40. And that tells me that a lot of Kelly Bryant's passes were actually short completions. And that's also that's corroborated by the film, like the games. And you'll watch, you see a lot of short passes. And I'll actually get into that in later videos of my Alabama versus Clemson previews. I'm going to break down a lot of Clemson games so you guys will be able to see that. Uh, but yeah, he throws a lot of short passes. And on the year, total, on the entire year, with one more game played in Alabama, he has 13 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, and has taken 22 sacks with a passer rating of 138.1. Um, he also has 646 rushing yards, and that's with that uh, Miami game added in. So, 2,678 yards passing, 13 touchdowns, and 6 interceptions, along with 646 rushing yards. Now, moving on to Jalen Hurts' numbers. Jalen Hurts on the year total has 222 passing attempts. That's already 140 less passing attempts on 135 completions. For 1,000, or on an average of 14 yards per completion, and I actually round it down a little bit. It's like 14.3, you know, something, something, extra places. Uh, so 14 yards per completion, 60.8% completion percentage on a yards per uh, yards per attempt average of 8.74. So that actually tells me that uh, a lot of his passes are more down the field, which... Uh, Compared to Kelly Bryant, a lot of them more down the field. He's not throwing a ton of them, per se, but definitely more than Kelly Bryant. That's corroborated by film, too. If you've been watching Alabama, you would see that. But check this out. Jalen Hurts actually has 15 touchdowns and one interception, but he has 21 sacks. I'm going to explain why those three numbers, the touchdowns, interceptions, and sacks, are significant for both of these quarterbacks in my analysis here. And Jalen Hurts' passer rating... Uh, Oh, wait, I didn't. I think I left it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up here so you can see it uh, when the video's up. Uh, but he also has 768 rushing yards. 768 rushing yards. That's actually one less game than uh, Kelly Bryant. And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, I may put these numbers up too if I'm not lazy. <laughs> uh, I think he has fewer rushing attempts than Kelly Bryant. Now, let's get into why these numbers matter. Kelly Bryant had 140 more pass attempts than Jalen Hurts. 
but he only took 22 sacks. That's significant. Jalen Hurts took 21 sacks. Jalen 21 sacks on 140 less pass attempts. Hurts has been sacked only one time less, only one less time than Kelly Bryant. Yet he has 140 less passing attempts. And I keep highlighting that to show you the, the emphasis on that, to show you that Jalen Hurts' pass protection has been very shaky this year. Uh, that number should highlight 362 passing attempts, 22 sacks. 222 passing attempts, 21 sacks. Jalen Hurts has had to uh, fight off a lot of rush issues this year. Uh, and that just shows you kind of the discrepancy between the Clemson line and the Alabama line on offensive line. With that said, that doesn't mean Jalen Hurts had a, a worse quarterbacking year. Jalen Hurts had five less interceptions and a higher pa a p yards per pass attempt. Even though, even though his pass protection was shoddy, his pass protection was shoddy, and he actually had more pressure on him. So Kelly Bryant threw more interceptions with less pressure. First, Jalen Hurts threw less interceptions with more pressure. That's an interesting like contrast there, that dynamic. So, and with that, Hurts is also taking deeper shots down the field and has to hold on to the ball longer. So that kind of accounts for some of those sacks, but it also shows that he's safe with the ball while also trying to attack. And it also highlights that Kelly Bryant is throwing a ton of short passes. He has 109 more completions than Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts has 135 completions. Kelly Bryant has 244. So Kelly Bryant has 109 more completions than Jalen Hurts, but he only has 738 more passing yards. I'm going to show you why that's significant with this next number here. So if you give Jalen Hurts the difference in attempts, passing attempts, at the same completion average and rate, so he's completing them at the same rate with the same average that I talked to you earlier, which was 14% at 60.8%, he would have 3,111 yards on the same number of completions and attempts as Kelly Bryant. So get this. If Jalen Hurts had 244 completions and 362 attempts, well, actually, it wouldn't be uh, 244 completions, actually, because he's only completing 60.8%. It'll be a little bit less. Um, I didn't put that number up, but just walk through here. <laughs> Bear with me for a second. On that 60.8% of 362 attempts, so you want to do the numbers yourself, so 60.8% on 362 attempts, whatever that completions come out to be, he would actually have uh, 311 yards. So Jalen Hurts would actually have more yards passing than Kelly Bryant. And that highlights why, or that helps you to see why I say that Jalen Hurts is actually taking deeper shots down the field and attacking down the field more. The numbers actually reflect it when you put their numbers on the same spectrum. Hopefully that made sense. I hope you guys were able to follow what I was trying to do there. But yeah, I'm just letting you know that Jalen Hurts is actually attacking down the field more than Kelly Bryant. He just didn't get as many opportunities to pass the ball. If you remember, if you watched Alabama games, he came out of every game, just about every game, very, very early. Sometimes in the second quarter, sometimes at the beginning of the third quarter, sometimes really close to the first quarter. Uh, Jalen Hurts didn't have to play a lot this season. Uh, and actually, that was kind of to my chagrin a little bit. I wanted him to play more. I wanted him to get more passing attempts down the field. But, you know, staff got to keep him safe. And moving on with that, a part of Jalen Hurts' uh, percentage being even lower, and 60% is not bad, actually. But a part of his, his completion percentage being a little bit lower is that Alabama receivers had the fourth worst drop rate in the SEC, which is really surprising considering the amount of talent we have at the receiver position with Guys like Calvin Ridley and Cam Sims and Robert Foster and the freshmen like Jerry Judy and uh, Devontae Smith. And Devontae Smith, they say, has one of the more sure-handed guys on the field, but I've seen him drop a couple this season. So the drops are contributing to his percentage rate being a little bit lower. And also, he's had to throw a lot of passes on the run, which ultimately ends up with him throwing the ball away out of bounds because he has nowhere to go with the ball. And not to mention, when you're taking deeper shots down the field, 
You know, you're going to hit some, you're going to miss. They're actually harder to hit. I mean, that's just go figure. That explains the difference in completion percentage between the two because Caleb Bryant doesn't usually take as many shots down the field like that. As a matter of fact, to give you the exact number on that drop rate for the receivers, it's actually 7.2%. And that's according to pro football focus, uh, Benny, who does a lot of um, SEC uh, numbers. So you can look him up on Twitter. I actually put his Twitter account right here on the screen. And so here's the thing. So a lot of you may say, well, Kelly Bryant actually played one more game. So that actually makes sense that he, uh, you know, had more passing attempts and more completions and more interceptions or whatever, you know, even though it's only one extra game. But here we go. Even if you take away the Miami game, Kelly Bryant still has 333 attempts and 221 completions with 2,426 passing yards. So in 12 games, which is the same amount Jalen Hurts has played, he has 111 more attempts than Jalen Hurts and 86 more completions and 486 more passing yards. And that's only 5.6 yards per completion. That, I'm telling you, that lets you know that his passes are shorter uh, on that yard difference. On that yard difference alone, just in the yard difference based on the, the same amount of games, he throws a lot of short passes. So that is another cooperation of what I've been saying. And when you look at the adjusted QBR of Jalen Hurts, it kind of just like, corroborates more of what I'm saying. It kind of proves my analysis here. The raw numbers always come out lower uh, in the FSU game. The first game of the season. The raw number said Jalen Hurts was actually had a 29.5 on his QBR. When he came back out, he actually had 47.7%. So people thought, like I said, Jalen Hurts hasn't played perfect, but he hasn't been bad like people have been saying. The, raw, the, the adjusted numbers always come out better. AM game, the raw number said 35.9. And this is out of 100. Uh, he came back 43.7. LSU game. Oh, man, people say he doesn't want us a game. The raw number said 53.1. The adjusted numbers came out 71.0. The Mississippi State game, oh, this is my favorite. <laughs> the raw number said he was 76.2, and a lot of people acknowledge that he did good in this game. But the adjusted numbers said he was 90.5. It's great. Oh, <laughs> And here's the one, oh, this is what I really hated about this. A lot of my fellow Alabama fans really got on Jalen Hurts. And I'm here to say, you were wrong. Because the raw number of the of the QBR said 46.2%. But the adjusted number says Jalen Hurts actually has 73.6% on his QBR. Because like I said, those throwaways and those checks to running plays, there were actually good decisions. A lot of people didn't know that. They assumed that Jalen was just holding on to the ball and taking stacks. He was making good decisions. He wasn't perfect, but he wasn't really bad, like people were saying. And on the whole season, the raw number said 74.8%, which isn't bad within itself. But the adjusted QBR for the whole season is that Jalen Hurts had at 82.7. My friends, <laughs> Jalen Hurts is not a bad quarterback. And I just want to do this comparison, this analysis to show people this game, it won't be lost because Jalen Hurts is a bad quarterback. We can obviously see that Jalen Hurts is actually outperforming Kelly Bryant. Kelly Bryant actually reminds me more of Jalen Hurts last year than he does remind me of Deshaun Watson. And uh, and that's important to remember. This game won't be won because Kelly Bryant is so explosive. And Jalen Hurts is not. It won't be won because of that. Because that will be false. Uh, quarterbacks don't win games by themselves anyway. I have to always harp on that. But I just wanted to get this out, out to you guys because this is important to see. I think this is really uh, good information. Uh, let me know. What do you think about this? Do you think I'm wrong? Uh, do you think I'm right? Uh, do you think I'm missing something? But either way, uh, tell me, as a matter of fact, a question for the end of the video is, you know, what, what are some things you like about Kelly Bryant? What have you seen from him uh, that you maybe you want to add to this? You can leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you think about Kelly Bryant as quarterback. And honestly, let me know what your honest and true thoughts about Jalen Hurts are. You can leave it in the comments. I'll try to respond to everybody. Or at least all that I see. Uh, see you for my next video. I'll probably be talking about some things in general that I've noticed about Clemson. I've already got notes on that written down as well. And some of the things I'll talk about. And I'll try to get that up to you quickly. 
And after that, I'll move into some analysis of the various games that I've watched of Clemson this year. That's going to be a lot of fun. So see you in the coming videos, guys. I appreciate you all watching.